Good morning, Grade Sixes. Welcome to your daily lesson of mathematics brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. Hope you guys are all well today and looking forward to today's lesson. Just a reminder of the email address on your screen, grade six at worksheetcloud.com. Please feel free to send me any emails regarding feedback on the topics we've done, topics that you'd like me to cover. Perhaps you've got a question or a query and you'd like me to uh, go over a particular concept again. And I'll be more than happy to do so uh, if you guys email in. So please use that email address for you. Another reminder about the online activities and accompanied memos uh, that goes with every uh, lesson that you guys are watching. Just have a look on worksheetcloud.com. Go through previous lessons and memos and activities and make sure that you consolidate and continually revise the work that you've been taught. Mathematics needs constant practice um, and I encourage you guys to do so. Today we're going to be looking at triangular numbers and then multiplying and dividing by numbers between 0 and 1. Um, on either side of that we have our warm-ups and our mental arithmetic questions as well as our finisher and brain bender to finish off on. So let's have a look at our warm-up activity for today. But now I'm sure you guys know that you need to tell me the value of every symbol, including the question mark at the end. Um, remember to work through this slowly, uh, write everything down, have a look at your thoughts on paper, write it out logically, try it out. You might need to start again if you use the wrong numbers. But good luck, take your time, and let's see how you guys get on. So, um, I'm going to start on the fourth line. Uh, which is the pot plant, okay? And um, I know that 9 plus 9 is 18, and then if I minus that 9, well, that's going to give me 9, okay? So here I've got 9 plus 9, then subtract 9 is going to equal to 9, okay? So I think I've started in the right place there. Above that, I know that anything multiplied by 0 is going to be equal to 0, Okay, so 0 multiplied by 9. So your balloons are going to be equal to 0. Then if we go to the second line, 41 minus 0 is going to leave me with 41. So the magician's hat must be 41, because 41 plus 41, and then subtract 41, is going to give me 41. Okay, so my magician's hat is equal to 41. And if I go to the top line, just to check it all out, 41 plus 0 plus 9, does that give me 50? Absolutely. Okay, and now all that's left for me to do is do the multiplication equation at the bottom uh, of the puzzle. And we know the magician's hat is 41, the balloons are 0, and the plant is 9. And we know that mul anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So if I go 41 multiplied by 0, it's 0. 0 times 9 is 0. If I did 0 times 9 first, that's still 0. Multiplied by 41 continues to be 0. So it doesn't matter what order you multiply in there. When there's a 0 being multiplied in the equation, your answer is 0. So I hope you guys managed to work through that and you, you wrote your thoughts down and it made sense to you. Um, well done for doing so. Let's have a look at your mental arithmetic questions for today. Guys, here are your eight mental arithmetic questions for today, all covering past taught principles. Again, I'm going to say write all your thoughts down. Uh, pencil and paper would be really handy. Uh, remember, when we try to do too much mentally, uh, we can make careless errors. Uh, and then on careless errors, remember to check your work. Uh, and we've been practicing checking for a while now. Uh, so make sure you do that. Um, take your time. Uh, there's no rush. Work methodically and carefully, and let's see how you guys get on. Right, so question one is 578, comma 38. So that's 500, seven uh, tens, which is 70, and then eight units, and then three tenths, and then eight hundredths. Okay, if I had to break that number up. And to that, we are adding 429. 87. So four hundreds, two tens, which is the 20, nine units, eight tenths, seven hundredths. And now we add normally, eight and seven is 15. I need to carry the one. 
3 and 8 is 11, plus that 1 is 12. Remember, decimals always line up, and I need to carry that 1. 8 and 9 is 17, plus that 1 is 18. I need to carry the 1 again. 7 and 2 is 9, plus that 1 I've carried is 10. And then if I carry again, 5 and 4 is 9, plus that 1 is 0. Okay, so let's check this. Remember, the checking strategy for uh, an addition sum is to do subtraction. Okay, so if I subtracted, let's subtract um, 578 comma uh, 38. Okay, and here we should get an answer. We're looking for an answer of 429 comma 87. If we get that answer, then we know our addition calculation was correct. So first thing I need to do is borrow. Okay, so 15 minus 87. So the sevens are the same. So it's a good start for us. Okay, I need to borrow again. And 11 minus 3 is 8. And again, okay, that's another good sign for us. I need to borrow again. Okay, so I'm going to borrow all the way from the beginning. And now I've got 17 minus 8, and that's 9. Remember the decimals line up. Okay, so, so far so good. 9 minus 7 is 2, and the last one, 9 minus 5 is 4, and happy days, 429,87 is the number we are looking for, and that's the one we got. So we can move on, confident, knowing that our calculation is correct, um, and yeah, that should uh, help us in any assessment or test. You know, if you check an answer and you know it's correct, it gives you a little bit of a boost, so make sure you use that uh, checking strategy. 178,801 subtract 94,209. Okay, and again, numbers in the correct columns. Okay, um, and we subtract normally. Okay, so we need to borrow. 11 minus 9 is 2, 9 minus 0 is 9, 7 minus 2 is 5. Decimals always line up. 8 minus 4 is 4. I need to borrow again. 17 minus 9 is 8. Okay, so now remember the checking strategy for subtraction is to do addition. And let's have a look. 2 plus 9 is 11. Good start. 9 plus 0 is 9. 5 plus 2 is 7. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 9 is 17. So we know our answer must be correct. And again, we can move on uh, confident knowing that our calculation um, is correct. You can see guys, it doesn't take long to check. Okay, so in my opinion, um, yeah, it's pretty foolish not to check your work um, because it's really, really quick and, and can help you um, a lot uh, when you're doing your calculations in assessments. Long multiplication for question three. Okay, and we know now that we can do uh, multiple methods. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to split 123 up into 100, 20, and 3, and I'm going to split 42 up into 40 and 2, and I'm going to draw my little table. Okay, and let's have a look at how we get on. So we know 100 times 40, 100 times 4 is 400, so 100 times 40 must be 4,000. That's a pretty straightforward calculation. 100 times 2 is 200, another straightforward. 20 times 40, well, uh, 2 times 40 is 80, so 20 times 40 must be 800. 20 times 2 is 40, 3 times 40 is 120, and 3 times 2 is 6. So no real complicated um, calculations there. Now I must just add. So my first column, if I add all those numbers up, I'm going to get 4,920. And if I add up that second column, I get 246. So now I just need to add that 4,920 uh, and 400, uh, 246, sorry. So I'm just going to make a little bit of space, if you don't mind. Just need to rub that three out. Okay, so let's add that. 4,920 plus 246. And if we add that together we get 5,166. 
But let's go look at another method just to see um, if my calculation is indeed correct. Okay, so we're looking for 5,166. Let's use the old column method. Okay, and four and two. Um, placeholder zero. Four times three is 12. Four times two is eight plus the one is nine. And then we have four times one is four. Then if we add six, okay, they write six, okay, they good. 11, so the one is correct, and then five. So both methods give me the same answer, so I'm there, I'm happy uh, that the calculation is correct. Uh, as always, you guys need to choose the method that suits you the most. I really like to split up the numbers like I did in the first uh, method because it just helps me visualize exactly what's happening to the numbers. I find that in the column method, we, you know, we're saying, uh, four times one where it's actually 40 times a hundred and in the in the first example I did you can actually see it's 40 multiplied by a hundred, but the choice is yours um, 1015 divided by seven okay, it's short division so we can use this method Seven doesn't go into one, but it goes into ten once with three left over goes into 31 four times with three left over goes into 35 five times with nothing left over. Remember the check is to take the answer and multiply it by the divisor, which was seven. Seven times five is 35. Seven times four is 28 plus the three is 31. And uh, seven times one is seven plus the three is 10. And there you can see 1,015, 1,015. So my calculation must be correct. Okay, when you're doing fractions, the first thing you need to notice when you're adding fractions is the denominators have to be the same. And in this instance, they're not. So you've got 1 over 7 plus 1 over 4. You should be saying to yourself, what is the lowest common multiple of 7 and 4? So if you wrote out the 7 times table and you wrote out the 4 times table, what's the first number that happens in both sets? Okay, so the lowest common multiple becomes the lowest common denominator, and yes, that's 28. So 7 goes into 28 four times, then 4 times 1, okay, is going to be equal to 4. Um, 4 goes into 28 seven times, then 7 times that one is 7, and then it's just a case of adding that 4 and 7, that gives you 11, keeping the same denominator of 28, okay? Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the deal when you're working with uh, fractions and when you're adding them. Remember the same rule applies to the subtraction of fractions. The denominators must be exactly the same before you add them. Multiply and divide, the denominators do not have to be the same. When we multiply a decimal number by 10, 100 or 1000, we know that the number gets bigger. Okay, now we're multiplying by a thousand, so our number gets bigger by three places, all right? So that's going to be equal to 871, all right? Question seven is all about order of operations, so we should know that we do the brackets first. So three plus five is equal to eight, and then we need to multiply by four. So eight multiplied by four is equal to 32. You don't have to keep the 8 in brackets. I'm just showing you here that I added the numbers in the brackets first before I multiplied. So the answer of 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay. Um, and then your last question is a measurement and conversion question. So here you need to know how many meters there are in a kilometer. And yes, there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Remember, kilo means 1,000. So kilometer means 1,000 meters. All right. Um, so one and a half kilometers is going to be equal to 1,500 meters. Okay. Okay, cool. So I hope you guys managed to work through those eight questions. If there's any area that you stuck on, go back and have a look at the previous lessons with activities and memos, brush up on those skills, make sure you consolidate them, make sure you know and understand them before moving forward onto anything else, okay? Really, really important, guys.
Okay, let's get into the main uh, theme of today, which is triangular numbers and multiplying and dividing by numbers between 0 and 1. Okay, so triangular numbers uh, and looking at the uh, diagrams on the screen, uh, you should be able to see five triangles. Okay, so triangular numbers start off with the number 1. And then what do I need to add to 1 to continue to make triangles? And you can see on the second diagram, I add two blocks. Okay. Uh, in the third diagram, three blocks. In the fourth diagram, four blocks. In the fifth diagram, five blocks. So if you have a look, um, what are the totals of these diagrams, of these five triangles? So one, three, six, ten, and fifteen. So those are your first five triangular numbers. All right, that's how many, uh, if you have to use dots, for example, you would use three dots to make your triangle for three, then if you had to make the next triangle up or the triangle up one size, you're going to be using six dots, then 10, then 15. So you can also see, um, and I've mentioned triangular numbers before, you can also see that triangular numbers increase by one more each time. Okay, so if you look at the difference between one and three, that's two. Then the next difference between 3 and 6 is 3. And the next difference between 6 and 10 is 4. Then 5, then 6, then 7, then 8, then 9, then 10. And it carries on increasing by that uh, one more each time. Okay. So that's triangular numbers. So here you've got a different um, way of representing triangular numbers. Okay. So uh, the first five triangular numbers are again on, on your screen. Um, and I just wanted to show you this diagram because here you've got um, a triangular number on the left, right, which is equal to 10. And you've got a triangular number on the right, which is equal to 6. If I put two triangular numbers together, you can see that I get a square number. Okay. Um, so here we've got 16 as the square number. And you know that 4 multiplied by 4 is 16. So therefore it is a square number. So really interesting that two triangular numbers put together can equal a square number. And we've already said that that is a square number. Okay, so just a couple of interesting things there and a couple of different types of number that I think it's really useful for you guys to to learn about and to know and how those numbers interact with with other numbers. And we've spoken about 4 being the number that multiplies by itself to give you 16. Okay. So I thought it would be useful to chat through multiplying by multiples of 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. Because um, quite often when we get to decimals uh, and we have to multiply by 0 0.1, um, it, it can be quite complicated. Um, but if you realize that multiplying by 0 0.1 is the same as dividing by 10, it can make your life a lot easier. So, for example, if I've got 10 multiplied by 0 0.1, it's the same as saying 10 divided by 10. Or perhaps I've got 100 multiplied by 0 0.01, it is the same as saying 100 divided by 100. Okay, so those are two useful uh, tips, uh, I think once you know about them, they're not really tips. It just becomes sort of co common knowledge and it can make your life a lot easier. But if you didn't know about it uh, and you are going to approach using decimals, then it is really handy for you to keep this information uh, at the back of your head. So, for example, 4 multiplied by 0 0.8. Okay, we know that 4 times 8 is 32 and then 32 multiplied by 0 0.1. That, that calculation can become complicated, all right? But if I know that multiplying by 0 0.1 is the same as dividing by 10, then all I need to do is say 32 divided by 10 is 3,2, okay? So as you can see, it makes your, your life a lot easier. So if we had 15 multiplied by 0 0.03, again, we could say 15 multiplied by 3 and then multiplied by 0 0.01. So all I've done there is I've broken up 0 0.03 into 3 multiplied by 0 0.01. All right. Now I know that 15 times 3 is 45. Now to say 45 times 0 0.01 can be a complicated calculation. But all I need to do is divide it by 100. And now my calculation becomes so much easier. Okay. 
So make sure you keep this uh, information in the in the back of your head. Okay. Now, when we divide by multiples of 0 0.1 and 0 0.01, okay, it's the opposite. So dividing by 0 0.1 is the same as multiplying by 10, and dividing by 0 0.01 is the same as multiplying by 100. So the best way to show you this is to, through using a couple of examples. So 36 divided by 0 0.4, that can seem like a complicated calculation, but if I know that I can split up the 0 0.4 into 4 divided by 0 0.1, then all I need to do is to say 36 divided by 4 is 9, 9 divided by 0 0.1 is the same as saying 9 times 10, and we can all do 9 times 10, which equals 90. So it makes the calculation a lot easier. And the same with 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 in this case, I can split the 0 0.02 into 2 divided by 0 0.01. Okay, and then all I need to do is to work out 3 divided by 2. So 3 over 2 is 1.5. Uh, 1.5 in this case, divided by 0, 0.01, as we said, is the same as multiplying by 100. And I'm pretty sure we can all do 1.5 times 100, and that's going to give us 150. So guys, uh, just a little uh, tip really, uh, which I hope helps you moving forward when, you, when you're working with multiplying and dividing by 0, 0.1 and 0, 0.01 and multiples thereof. So remember, you can also do it with 0, 0.2, 0, 0.3, etc., as well as 0, 0.02, 0, 0.03, as I've indicated in the examples. You've just got to change your, your calculation uh, to fit the answer. Um, okay, so multiplying by decimals between 1 and 0. When we multiply a number n, for example, by a number greater than 1, the answer will be bigger than n. Okay, so uh, when we multiply a number n by a number between 0 and 1, the answer will be smaller than n. Okay, when we divide a number n by a number greater than 1, the answer will be smaller. And when we divide a number n by a number between 0 and 1, the number will be bigger. So this is just a bit of a recap on the examples I've, I've shown you. Okay, so for, for the first statement, uh, if I multiply a number, let's say 6, by a number greater than 1, so let's say 2, 6 times 2 is going to be bigger than 6. Okay, so I think we all understand that. The second statement, if I had to multiply 6 by a number between 0 and 1, so let's choose 0, 0,5. 6 times 0, 0,5 is 3, so you can see that it's smaller than 6. Okay, when I divide a number n, and I'll use 6 again, if I divide that number uh, n by a number greater than 1. So for example, let's say 6 divided by 3, then your answer is 2, so that's smaller than 6. But if I divide that number 6 by a half again, because a half is between 0 and 1, then my answer becomes 12, which is bigger than my starting number of 6. Okay, so that's just a little recap of what, we, what we've spoken about in this lesson. Guys, that brings us on to our finisher, which is the game of 24. Uh, and by now, I'm pretty confident that you guys know that you need to use, for example, on the first card, 4, 4, 7, and 8. And you need to use plus, minus, multiply, and divide, or a combination of them. You don't have to use all of those operational signs. But you must use the four numbers and the operational signs to come up with the answer of 24. Okay? You need to do that three times, once for each card. If you can do it more than once for each card, then you're really going to be, uh, you know, going on a positive direction and improving your mental arithmetic skills. Remember, order of operations counts. Uh, and yeah, let's see how you guys get on. Great sixes, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you guys learned something and you can take something away from the lesson. Remember the online activity and memo that's uh, waiting for you on worksheetcloud.com. Um, have a really good day. Keep safe. All the best.